What up, it's Book the Wind. Today I'm going to teach you how to putt the best I can. I know how to putt on this game, but do I know how to teach others how to putt? I'm going to do my best. Uh, this is for 750 YouTube subscribers special. Thank you so much for every one of you. Uh, you got there way too quick, so I have to make this video. And let's start with your golfer and skills. This is probably one of the top five most important things I can teach you. So you might be wondering, what does putting skills do? You can go from nothing up to 10. I'm at a seven. Uh, you need three to get the Texas wedge and that's the only benefit uh, to increasing your putting besides reducing the putting grid. So if you have no putting, you're going to have a wide putting grid as shown here. So with zero putting uh, skills, this is how wide the putting grids are. Now you can still learn how to putt like this, but I would, uh, I would not recommend you have zero putting. Um, I would recommend you have zero putting if you are trying to be one of the top 10 players in the world. If that's not you, don't have zero putting. But it's still the same. You just have less information. You only have four grids between the hole here on a 25 foot putt. And you have to read each grid as it goes along the way. We'll just hit this putt. I don't know. I haven't put it on zero uh, putting <clears throat> in a while. <laughs> All right, so this is what it looks like if you have 10 out of 10 putting. As you can see, compared to zero, um, you have, remember when we had a 25 foot putt, we had four grids. On 10, I think we have 14, 14 grids I can count, 13 or 14. And so each grid is a little bit of information where it goes a little bit. The best way to explain this would be um, treat the grids like wind. Just picture them as wind and how much it's going to push the golf ball over. Right, we'll just hit this putt. See, with 10 grids, it's a little too much for me, to be honest. It's a little too much information. I mean, it was right over the edge, but it doesn't matter. All right, so this is what seven grids looks like. Seven, pow, seven stats on putting. This is what I have. This is my default. This is what I use every round. I never change unless I'm just messing around, which I can do. Um... This is the grid size that I'm most comfortable with. And my advice to you, tip number one, is find the grid size that most appeals to you and never change. For me, it's this size. For you, it could be something else. So as you can see, Texas Wedge just means you can putt it uh, from the fairway instead of just the green and the fringe. Now you need a minimum of three putting skills to have it. I go with seven, not because it gives me a silver wedge, it's just the grid size that I prefer. I recommend that every single person have at least five, five to ten to be honest. Um, the majority of the people I beat is because I out putt them. And so if you can putt as good as me, um, you're going to have a lot more success in this game. You're going to crush your friends if you can just out putt everyone. It's, it's very valuable. So in this tutorial, I'm only going to focus on tour. Uh, when we hit 800 subscribers, we'll go with a pro putting and 900 we'll do a sim putting. But today it's going to be tour tutorial. And I'm going to give you the most important tip coming up. 
So let's head on to the course. All right, so let's start off by giving the most important tip you'll ever get from any golfer in this game. There's two steps to making, three steps to making any putt. Swinging it straight back and forth. If you swing it crooked, it'll go crooked. Getting the weight right and getting the line right. I'm going to teach you, first of all, how to get the easiest one. Well, the easiest one for me is swinging straight, but um, it's getting the weight right. So we have a 12-foot putt, and it's 2 inches uphill. Now, traditionally, you would go 14 feet. Play 2 inches, 2 feet. And that's pretty standard, and you can use that for 90% of putts on this game. 90%. If you have putts that are over a foot <coughs> uphill or downhill, that's when you have a, a different adjustment. But for this putt, 14 would be the standard, but that's not what you should aim. I always go one more, 15. But I also overswing on my putts. So on my backswing, I always make sure it hits the line before I even think of flicking it forward. And the reason for that is if you underswing on any putt, just like the old saying, 100% of putts that don't get there can't go in. As long as you hit it, even if you hit it too hard, it still has a chance to go in. But if you hit it too short, it has no chance. So once it hits the line, that's when I go. So at least I'm getting... Minimum perfect, but usually a slight overswing because of my reaction time. And I'm also overswinging my follow through. And I'm doing that to keep a straight line. I'm doing it so if you start being slow and slow and trying to just really time it out, you're go your thumb's going to move occasionally and you're going to get it offline. So my, my method is I go overswing, overswing, but I keep it online. I have a, I have a firm forward, and I, I always just look at the line, the, that bar where it says that right there, that's the bar. So, so for this putt, it's technically going to go like 16, 17 because I'm overswinging. So I'm technically going three far. I'm going to show you a little diagram after this hole just to reinforce it, but I'll just read this putt first. And like I said, use the dots like wind. How much is it going to push? The faster they go, the more it's going to push it over. But there's two parts to every putt. There's usually, for this putt, there's two parts. For longer putts, there's even more. The first half, it's not the... The dots, the break, aren't going to affect the putt as much because the, the ball is picking up speed. When it slows down, that's when the dots hit it harder. So even though the dots are really quick at the start, it kind of slows down a little bit at the end. So it's not going to be... If the dots were moving at the same speed they are on this first line right by my ball, it would be like here. It would be just a steady break all the way. But since they slowly die off, it's like here probably. I don't know. <clears throat> and just like I said, I overswing, overswing, I underswing. I underswing like craziness. But let's go to the short tutorial. All right, I was going to bring the Microsoft Paint tutorial, but let's skip that. And here's the number two tip that I already talked about, but I'm going to reinforce the weight. The ideal distance to aim for every single putt is three to four feet more than what it says. Once you have that down, that should be your standard weight for every single putt. So, for example, for this putt, it's 12 feet. And it's two inches downhill. So it's 10. So technically you should be aiming still 13. 
I personally aim 11 and overswing. That's how I get the extra two feet is my overswing. Now, if you putt and you're putting perfect, perfect, or sometimes slow, perfect, right? You already know how what your average putting is. If you're trying to go perfect, perfect, and that's what you're doing, you should be aiming at 13 feet. Three inches or three. It says 10, add three, 13. If you're going perfect, perfect, that's where you should be aiming. If you're going over swing, over swing, like me, it's 11 feet. If you under swing, you should be aiming at 14. So, so here's the tutorial. We'll show the little image just for text. This is the most important tip probably in putting. Is three feet past what it says. When you do the math, add three. And however you get to it, that's the line you should take. So for me, it's 11. I'm going to overswing, overswing. Probably, maybe I'll underswing. Here's the thing. I underswung on that first putt, but I'm not using my normal controller because I sold my Xbox. So I'm using my, my PC Xbox controller, which isn't broken in yet. So that's my excuse for the first putt. Overswing, overswing, birdie. All right, we got an easy putt here, but let's just go look at the first grid. It's going left stronger than anyone. I'm talking about the first grid closest to my putter. You can see the little dot slowly moving. So when you see that, you give it a little adjustment. Then you look at the second dot. It's a touch left. And then the third one, it's moving back right a touch. So you give it back the little left. It's probably the fucking underswing. All right, we're back. We're back on a gust. We're at a gust now. So this is more trickier putts. So I wanna wanna go through all of them. So this is a 12, 17 footer, five inches downhill. So you play at 12. I play at 13 and then I overswing, or I try to at least. But here's the thing as long as you have that weight down and you're not uh, hitting it to 12, you're going to be a, a much better putter already. So many people just try to die it in the hole, and that's wrong. I know people that power putt. And they're aiming it like they're hitting it. They're just crushing at the hole. And if they hit the center, it goes in great. But they're not great putters. They they can make a lot of putts in a row, but overall they're pretty bad. Um, so I gave you the, the the biggest tip, and that's just getting the weight down. So getting the line down is the hardest for me to explain. But so we got it at thirteen. And obviously this is going to snap left to right. But how how do you learn this? First of all, you already got the weight down. So if if you're a dead waiter, again, if you hit it perfect, perfect, you should be aiming 15. And that should be your consistent spot because it's 12 plus 3. For me, it's 13 and I overswing, which gets it close to 15. So if... So you have the weight down. So now you just have to learn the line. And you have to learn. If it's steady all the way. It's just going to continue to break the entire putt. But if you see the dots ever slow down a bit. That's when you can be like. Okay it's not going to be that much. But even though they're slowing down a little bit at the hole. This is still a pretty steady one. Um, I don't know if we'll make this. Probably won't. But uh this looks like the line for me. I don't know. Went right over the hole. But as you can see, I'm a foot past the hole. That, that's, that's, that's perfect, like, in terms of... I know in, uh, in real golf, you just aim for the apex and stuff. 
This isn't real golf, this is a video game. Okay, here's a quick three-footer. I know a lot of people uh, I miss these. So, if you look at the bottom ray, it says 1.7 degrees above. If it's ever, if it's a short putt like this, and it's one degree or less, never play it outside the hole. That's tip three. It's a weird tip, but since it's 1.7, yeah, you actually got to play it outside the hole. But, uh, simplify it. You can always take it a little less and a little harder. A little less, a little harder. But, uh, this looks like, you know, what it is. All right, here's tip number four. If it's uphill, you play a little bit less break than you would if it was flat. And this one's five inches uphill. So again, we go 26, add one, 27. If you hit it perfect, perfect, you should be aiming 29. And uh, so the break is just not a lot. Man, that underswing, that underswing is going to cost us. Usually I don't underswing, but like I said, though, the importance of Aiming it, that was like dead weight, so if I aimed it three and that was a dead weight, that's just, that's still dead center in. But since I underswung there, we, we came up an inch short. And if you come up an inch short, you can't make the putt as, as easy as that putt was. Tip number five, if it's downhill, play slightly more break and here's a, here's an interesting one because so it says 13 feet to the hole five inches downhill so it means it's eight right but if you go eight it says downhill three inches so it's only going to go to 11 so which one do you play and the truth is you play the whole one so it says eight, that is the number. We go, we go nine and we aim it. And since it's a steady break and it's a little, it's downhill, you gotta play it a touch more than you would. Overswing, overswing, dead center. It's downhill one foot, it's at 1.2 feet. So it's gonna be uphill. I've never had this putt before. This is one of the craziest putts here. St. Andrews, we're playing now um so what i would do is if there's about 11 breaks in this it goes left right left right left right you know double breaker it'd be one one this is about a, as crazy it gets but you go at the start first you line up it's it's straight at the center and then you just go and you remember the first half the grid doesn't impact it as much as the late half so it's a little left a little bit here, a little tap here, then tap it back, back. Just follow the grids. Follow the grids is my uh, tip. At the end, of, about two squares from the end, there's one that's going pretty steady to the left. I think that's can impact the most. And then, how hard do we hit it? I mean, about here maybe? I don't know. This is not going to go in, but... It's a cool looking putt, nonetheless. This one's tracking on a very good line. Look out. Oh, he All right, so we just, really good putt. just anyways, quite you get the point of what you do on those type of putts. All right, we're at St. Andrews. Uh, here's an interesting putt, I think. Um, again, we go, it's 18, down three, so it's 15. We played 16. So, what do you do when the slope is severe at the start and then it flans out? So, it's one of those putts where you, it's, it's going to move it right away. And then it's going to flan out. So, if it's going to stay the whole time, you'd be aiming out here and breaking it out. 
but it, it flattens out. It doesn't break as much at the end. So you just got to get the first half half done. And to do that, you just got to pretend it's wind and how much is going to push it over. And, I mean, this kind of looks a little too less. Maybe you know, there. Oh, we underswung. Fuck. All right, welcome back. I thought I'd show a, like a little, a little tester, and how to use the Texas wedge if you have the Texas wedge. What you need to do, you see that little fringe part before the green? You got to add a couple inches. So just keep that in mind that when you're putting through the fringe or fairway, you you have to hit it a little bit harder. Um, I usually go about three feet further. If I'm in the fringe, if it's close, you know, not much fringe, two, one. This one's about two to three feet more, but that's the least of our problems in this 122 footer, two foot uphill putt. Um, so you would aim it about here, put that extra three from the fringe. And then, so how to read this putt would be, um, uh, Pray. but no it's going to shoot it straight left obviously but then you still got to read the, the other other part of the putt it's going to break back at the end so pretty steady so at one point it just flattens out as soon as you get up the hill so you just got to know it's going to shoot up the hill so once it's up the hill, then you got to read the putt. So it's like, yeah, it's got to be hugging this edge the whole time. So you want it about here. And then where are you going to get it up there, up the hill? I don't know. So then if we make this, you know, we probably should just quit. And we are going to two putt. Alright, we took a mulligan on that last one to try and make it the second time because it was fun. But Alright, we're back. And this putt sucks. And I'm going to show you how to make it. Take out your wedge. Just kidding. I'm, I'm against uh, chipping on green. So even though it's probably the best play here. Um, I still don't chip on greens, so let's try to putt. So it was 48, we played about 49. It says up four inches, so it's a little bit more uphill, so that's why I go to 50 instead. Especially as you move up here, you're going to putt it even more, so it's going to kill a little more speed, so maybe get a little extra. Um, not much extra, though. And then... Just kind of hope for the best. Yeah, that's and if we didn't underswing because of the stupid controller, we would have uh, made it for you. All right, welcome back. We're at Wolf Creek. Um, I don't know if you can see that we're, we're minus three through one. I'm just trying to, I'm not trying, but we, we I'll beat the first hole. But this is one, of the, here's tip number six or seven or whatever. Um, for courses like Wolf Creek, the Evian Resort, and Torrey Pines, the greens are messed up. So if you miss putts at Torrey Pines, Wolf Creek, this course, or the Evian Resort, it's not necessarily your fault. So if you have a bad round of putting and you think it's you, it might not be you because these greens are so scuffed that everyone misses. And sometimes people make bad putts and they go in here because the greens are so messed up. 
So they think they're the greatest because they're putting. But they're actually just not that good and getting lucky at the time. So you can be great putt here and miss. You can be slightly off and make. It's it's a weird course, but just to keep that in mind when you're playing those three courses. Because it can really mess with some people, especially if you're new to the game. But uh, this is what I really wanted was this type of putt. So it's 85 feet up the hill at Wolf Creek. Now it says 3 feet uphill. So that's 3 times 12, 36 plus 85, which would be 121. Don't bring your calculators out. That's what it is. Um, however, if you're playing at Wolf Creek, I have a friend who's a top player. His name's Monkey Waz. I'll throw him under a bus. He always leaves these putts short because the math doesn't make sense. All right. You always should give it a bit extra when you're uphill on these courses with bumpy greens, like, like the three I mentioned. So that's why we're going to go 133 here. And then I guess we can, we can try read it. Uh, let's take a look. It flattens out at the end. Big break here. Big there. So we're just going to go do, 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 do. Or we, we said 133, so that's what it will go. <clears throat> uh, just give me, it's going to go. All right. I don't know. We're going to try get fucking underswing. I'm sorry for swearing. As you can see there, even though we hit it further, we did underswing. We did underswing. But we still need probably 135 to get there. And a normal overswing, overswing. Button. So the tip is if it's uphill on bumpy greens and it's on these courses play even more because uh, if the greens are bad they're slower uphill all right welcome back we have this a uh, very very tough putt because just like the last hole it says 38 feet two feet uphill so be 24 62 so we hit 63, but we're actually going to hit like 71, I think that's my number. Maybe 72. I feel like hitting it. All right, then we read it. It's going to break right to left. Just play it like the wind. It's moving it at the start. Remember, it impacts it more at the end. So it actually looks like it might be a touch left to right. I don't know. It's pretty straight, actually. It's gonna push it. The dots are more uh, stronger at the start, but they're more impactful at the end. So that's why I just hit the putt. But we had the weight down, and as you see, we we really overhit it. But we had perfect weight. We just burned the edge. Smoke. I mean, subscribe to this channel. Because I'm a sad baseball. All right, let's try this as the final part of the, the tutorial. Um, we're going to try. It's 51 feet, two feet downhill. You got to trust what the hole says. So it'd be 27. So you got to trust what the hole says. So it says 51 minus two feet, 24. 27 roughly is going to get all the way to the hole. So then you go. One more for your normal thing, but in this case, when it's this severe downhill, this is when the time where you take one, instead of going one up, go one down. So instead of 28, we're going 26. If you dead weight it, 28. Uh, again, if you did, usually you would dead weight 30. But we're going to go 26 because when it's severely downhill, it uh, it keeps going and it usually goes past the hole. 
it picks up so much speed that it doesn't slow down in time. So then you just got to read it and uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, uh, why? Oh, that might be why. I'm just kidding. Have an amazing day. Take care.